Dramatic reading of the latest work of fiction by Natalie Mandingo III. Fifty Shades of White. Trash. In his Mountain Dew tank top and his tight cut-off jeans, Ted Johnson struck an imposing figure. And he knew it. His cockiness was matched only by his sperm count, which is the reason he had seven illegitimate children from seven different mothers. It was another dry, hot, dusty day in his Lake Placid trailer park. He was a handyman by trade, and he was currently three hours late for a plumbing job he was completely ill-equipped to handle. His only hope was that the woman of the house needed a good pipe cleaning more than she needed her leaky faucet fixed. He pulled his Pontiac Firebird into the gravel driveway with the kind of overblown macho swagger that can only be pulled off by someone who is deep, deep white trash. He used his tan, muscular arms to haul himself out of the car through the T-tops. Since the driver's side door was permanently jammed from a Jim Beam-induced rollover from three years ago, he walked confidently as he made his way up to the trailer, his boots crunching with every step on the dusty limestone. The trailer was moldy and unkempt, with a distinct sag in the middle. He made his way to the front of the trailer, climbing up the steps, which were not steps at all, but... Actually, old milk crates piled haphazardly in front of a screen door. He started to knock, but then a young woman suddenly appeared and opened the door. Howdy, she said. My name's Deirdre. She was a stocky girl, well on her way to being grossly overweight, but still able to cling on to that last bit of sexiness. Until the next bucket of fried chicken ripped it from her pudgy fingers. He could tell her ass was big, but stuffed and molded into her too tight jeans, it was shapely enough. Ted pretended to accidentally drop his pen, and she quickly bent down to retrieve it, her faded blue jeans stretching to their limit, like ten pounds of <coughs> stuffed into a five-pound sack. The sexual tension between the two was immediate and obvious, almost as obvious as the ample bulge in his cut-off shorts. Feeling a burst of confidence from the three Percocets he had taken a half hour before, Ted brushed up against her backside with the swollen outline of his... <coughs> She turned and looked into his eyes with a stare that said, My uncle raped me when I was eleven, so obviously I'll do you. Never one for subtlety, Ted ripped down her tube top, revealing two enormous undulating... <laughs> I can't Ned. take it. Ned! Yeah? <sighs> Are you projecting, my friend? <laughs> oh, well, you know, everyone... You know, they use their own personal experiences, oh. right? Oh... <laughs> you missed your calling, Ned. Seemed to be at least double E's. Ned, I'm telling you right now, you've this has got to be an ongoing deal. Seriously, this cannot be a one-off. Need an audio book, man. Oh, That's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, I'm down with that. Oh, Ned, this Ted is Ted quickly undid his massive Harley Davidson belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> Deirdre struggled to wiggle out of her too tight jeans like a garter snake trying to shed its old skin. <laughs> Ted couldn't help noticing that her nipples were extremely hard. <laughs> I can't see. Almost as hard as the three-day-old cat <laughs> sitting on the counter behind him. <laughs> he pulled down his pants and waited for the gasp as he revealed his oversized manhood. Dear, dear, did gasp. Dear, dear. Dear, dear. <laughs> type of gasp usually reserved for a $25 Cracker Barrel gift card. <laughs>